Hi there, my name is Melissa and I work at Boston Children's Museum and today we're going to do some sewing together. So the project I'm going to show you how to make is a pin cushion and that is a little pillow that you can use to hold your needles while you're not using them to sew. So it's an important part of your toolkit for when you do start sewing because then you'll always know where your needles are. So the materials that you will need for this project are a needle and thread. You'll need two pieces of fabric that are cut to be the same size. So I use two pieces of fabric that are pretty much square. You could use other shapes if you wanted to. A ruler and a pencil could be helpful. You also might want some stick pins, which are little pins that you can use to help uh, hold your fabric together as you're working and some material to stuff inside of your pin cushion. And I decided to use cotton balls to stuff inside my pin cushion. You could also use scraps of other fabric, or if you have some polyfill, which is the same stuff that's usually used in pillows that you would have on your bed or maybe on your couch at home. So to begin, you're gonna to wanna to thread your needle, which means you're gonna cut a piece of thread that's maybe about 12 to 18 inches long, and you're gonna put that end of the thread through the tiny little hole at the top of the needle, and that little hole is called the eye. And sometimes I think this is the hardest part of beginning your sewing project, is to get that little thread through the tiny eye of the needle. So you may need to ask a grown-up to help you with that. But I'm a grown-up and it's still pretty hard for me. So you just kind of have to be persistent and try it again and again until you get it. And once you've got your thread through the eye of your needle, then you're gonna wanna pull the two ends of the thread together so that you can create a knot that will hold them in place. So that's what I'm doing right here. Just create a knot at the end of your thread. So for my project, I have two pieces of fabric that are about four and a half inches square. Um, and you may want a ruler to help you as you're cutting out your fabric. But like I said, you could use another shape if you wanted to do a circle or a little animal shape. But especially when you're starting out, sometimes straight lines are the easiest to practice on. So that's why I chose a square shape for my pin cushion. So the first thing you're going to want to do is put your two pieces of fabric on top of each other. Whatever side of the fabric you want to show at the end of your project, you're going to want to have it not facing you as you're sewing. So basically you can think about it as you wanna work with the fabric inside out. Whatever you're looking at as you're sewing your project is gonna be on the inside of your project when you're all done. I used a couple of stick pins to help hold my fabric together as I'm working. And basically all you wanna do is stick them through your two pieces of fabric to hold them both together. I also thought it would be helpful to draw some straight lines to show where I was going to be sewing. Now my fabric actually has some straight lines on it, which is helpful to me as I'm looking for a guide for my stitches that we're going to make. But no matter what your fabric looks like, you could draw some straight lines to show you where you want to be working. On the last side, I left a little space, which is where I'm gonna make a hole that I'm gonna to use to put my cotton balls in, my stuffing into the pillow when it's all done. So you're just gonna to wanna to remember that you don't wanna sew everything up together, otherwise you won't have a way to get your stuffing inside. So I'm gonna start my sewing at one of the corners where I drew my pencil lines. And you're gonna push the needle through both pieces of fabric and that little knot that you made at the end is gonna stop it from coming all the way through. There's a little tail at the end, that's after the knot that we made. And then you're gonna to wanna to push the needle back through the two pieces of fabric and that is gonna make your first stitch. 
I decided to use a dark thread so that you guys could see it as I was working on this video. Um, but at the end, you'll also see it doesn't really show very much in my final project, but you could choose whatever thread color you have available or whichever thread color you like. So for this project, normally I would probably just choose a white or a yellow because that's the color that is in the fabric the most. One thing that I find really helpful to remember as I'm sewing is that you can go very slowly and sometimes that's the best way to one, make sure that you don't poke yourself with a needle, which can hurt, but two, it also helps you make sure that you're doing nice, even stitches. And um, if, you're, if you make a mistake, usually if you're going slowly, you catch it more quickly and then you can undo it if you need to. So one example of that would be if I accidentally poked the needle up through an area of the fabric where I didn't have my line, so it's not where I wanted my stitch to be. If you're working slowly, as the needle comes through the fabric, you can see that it's not in the right spot, and then you can just pull it out and then push it into a different area where the stitch should be. So now I have sewn all the way around all of my lines that I drew, and I remembered to leave a little space or a hole where we're gonna insert the stuffing into our project. So when you get to the end, you're gonna to wanna to create a little knot to make sure that your thread stays secure. And the way that you can do that is by putting your the end of your needle through the last stitch that you made, and it's gonna make a little loop, and then you can run your needle back through it, and that's gonna create a knot. And then you can cut the end of your thread. We're going to insert the stuffing into our project, but before we do that, we have to turn it inside out, and that's going to help uh, hide some of the stitches and also just make it look nice and finished off. So to do this, it's pretty much the same as if you take off a shirt and it's inside out and you have to turn it back around again. You're going to want to push through the little hole that you left all of the rest of the fabric. So see here, I'm starting to push all the fabric out through that little hole that I left. It's gonna take a little while, and just like with the rest of the project, I'm gonna go pretty slowly, because I don't wanna break anything, I don't wanna break any of my stitches. And now we have our pin cushion with a hole where we can still insert our stuffing inside. So with the cotton balls, I'm just going to do it one at a time and push them in until the little pin cushion is nice and fluffy. So now that I've decided I have enough stuffing in my pin cushion, I have to just close up that little hole that I left where we inserted the cotton balls. And for this piece, I actually chose a different color thread that's a little bit lighter, so if it does show, um, you won't really notice it very much. So you're gonna push the needle through at the end of the hole that you left, and I am gonna push the tail of that little piece of thread inside the project so you won't see that at the end. And then you're just gonna go back and forth just like we did before to close up that hole. So now we have our finished pin cushion, and you can use that to hold your needle and thread after you're done with your projects or stick pins that you have, and that way they'll never get lost. Thanks so much for sewing with me today.